Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Emily, the home bookkeeper, and on this channel, I help business owners and fellow freelance bookkeepers navigate the ever-changing QuickBooks Online, while also sharing insightful videos like this on all things business ownership and finance. As always, this is a sample company provided by QuickBooks for educational purposes only. Today's video is a subscriber request asking about managing the books when you are an Airbnb property manager. I love this question because there are so many people creating new careers when it comes to travel, private hosting, and building incredible destination stays. So let's dive in. The first thing you'll want to do as an Airbnb property manager in QuickBooks Online is to set up your chart of accounts. You'll want to include any expense account your business may need, which shouldn't be much since this seems to be mostly service-based, along with any assets you may have purchased for the business, like computers, office furnishings, um, office space, etc. You can also check out other chart of accounts videos available on my channel after this, but what's really important here is how you will separate your services or income and expenses. The biggest thing when it comes to a chart of accounts is to let your documentation speak for itself. I don't like to be overly detailed in the chart of accounts. Not every little item you purchase or receive through your business needs to have its own account. However, it does need to have its own documentation. My advice here since this is such a personal preference, is to keep your chart of accounts simple, but how you like to see it broken down on your reports. Just remember that if you get audited, you want an auditor to come in and go right back out. The longer they struggle to collect or decipher the data they need, the sassier they tend to get. Now let's connect your business bank accounts and credit cards. You'll want to, of course, have a separate business bank account from your personal one to stay compliant, make your tax prep and filings easier, and reconciliations less time consuming every month. Speaking of credit cards, I highly recommend having your Airbnb host sign a credit card authorization form. As a card, you can charge for things like invoices, supplies, Airbnb fees, etc. If you are only managing the property, the Airbnb host probably already has things set up on their end to charge and deposit into their accounts. I have an editable copy of my consulting agreement and credit card authorization form that I use in my own firm linked below. Next, you'll want to set up your service inventory. Since you will be invoicing your Airbnb host for things like your compensation, cleaning fees, repairs and maintenance, etc., you'll want to have those services set up in inventory so you can easily create invoices. One thing I do want to point out before we head out of the service inventory is the income account box. This is the account or bucket where your income for the service item will be shown on your reports. Once you have multiple properties, you can set up a bucket for each property, or you can divvy up your income under your different service offerings. This is completely up to you, but always make sure you check that the income account selected in the box is where you want the income for that service item to show on your reports. Now for an example, let's create a customer or your property owner. Here is where this becomes a little bit more specific to Airbnb property management. I would include your Airbnb listing name as your customer and then add in the owner's name. Under the address, enter the listing address and the owner's business email. For the website, I would recommend filling in with the property URL that's listed on Airbnb. You can even select how you wish for checks to be printed, though I don't know how many people really use checks these days. Under the payment column is where you can enter in the credit card authorization information that we discussed earlier, and even attach your management contracts. 
One thing I love about QuickBooks Online is that it makes it easy to have almost a fully digital business. Let's go ahead and create a sample invoice together. Head over to the invoices and once inside the invoice screen, select the green Create Invoice button. Inside the invoice, select the customer you wish to invoice. Then if you have all of the details from the customer screen entered in, the invoice will automatically populate. Select when you want your invoice to be due and then head down to enter in your product and service data. Complete the amounts, select if you wish to tax or not, and there you are. Some features I love about QBO invoicing is that you can write in notes, a statement message, attach documents and receipts, and even make invoices reoccurring for clients that you charge the same amount periodically. Once finished, click the green save and close or save and send button. I really hope this video answered all of your questions. If it didn't, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and we'll chat back and forth. And for more business resources, my online self-paced home bookkeeper masterclass, business supplies, gadgets, must-haves, and more, make sure to check out adjconsultinggroup.com backslash resources linked below. And of course, like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on those bell notifications so you'll never miss an upload. If you have any video or tutorial requests, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And for even more behind the scenes content of Life as a Home Bookkeeper, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Emma Dawn and connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you need more assistance, personal financial coaching or bookkeeping and payroll management, feel free to email or visit edjconsultinggroup.com. My firm is fully inclusive and ready to help you along wherever you may be in your entrepreneurship or personal wealth building journey.